So this is the third part of uh, nitrogen oxide emission or NOx emission. So let's see what are the similarities between SOx and NOx, between sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxides. <clears throat> so the similarities are both of them contribute to acid rain formation. So it means that SOx and NOx, both of them, when they react with water, SOx is going to produce sulfuric acid and NOx is going to produce nitric acid. So sulfuric acid and nitric acid, both of them, result in acid rain formation. The other one is contribution to particulate matter. So as you know, this some of this material during this reduction and oxidation is going to produce some particulate matter. So for example, those sulfates and nitrates are they belong to this category. Uh, both of them are primary air pollutants. So let's see what are the differences between SOx and NOx. So motor vehicles are the major emitter of NOx, but a very minor source of SOx, because as we said here, for vehicles, because uh, we can reduce uh, sulfur content by a fuel desulfurization, so we reduce the content of sulfur, so the SOx emission is going to be lower. So the second one is SOx are performed, or SOx are formed from the sulfur contaminants in fuel or the unwanted sulfur in sulfide ores. But NOx is completely different. So NOx, uh, as we saw it before in the second part of nitrogen, oxides we said we have two different sources of uh, NOx one of them is fuel NOx and the other one is thermal NOx so the thermal NOx is basically uh, a natural source and we don't have any control of that next one is formation of nitrogen oxide in flames can be greatly controlled by manipulating factors uh, at the end, we have ultimate fate and control. So here's the slide to show the NOx production from 1940 to all the way to 2000. In y-axis, we have emission in terms of million short tones and from 0 to 30. And here we have in different categories like fuel, combustion, industrial processing, transportation, and others or miscellaneous. So as you see here, the portion of transportation is getting bigger from 1940 to 2000. And here we have sulfur oxide, same thing, different categories. As you see here, the major anthropogenic source of sulfur dioxide generation is fuel combustion so we have fuel combustion industrial processes transportation and miscellaneous as you see here for transportation and miscellaneous it's almost getting toward to zero and also industrial processing basically we have fuel combustion as a major source of sex production so let's see how can we control NOx emission so there are two possible approaches to controlling NOx in combustion gases, one of them to, to modify the combustion process to prevent the formation of NOx, and the other one is treat the combustion gas chemically after the flame to convert the NOx to N2. So, first one is combustion modification and second one is to treat it. So combustion modification or combustion controls reduce NOx formation by one or more of the following strategies. To reduce peak temperature of the flame zone, to reduce gas residue time in the flame zone, and to reduce oxygen concentration in the flame zone. So gas treatment or flue gas treatment techniques, flue gas treatment to remove NOx is useful in cases where higher removal efficiencies are required than can be achieved with combustion controls. So it means that we have we already combusted those materials, now we produce NOx and we want to treat it. So flue gas treatment is also used where combustion controls are not applicable. So we can use by catalytic reduction, 
adsorption and absorption I'm gonna explain this adsorption and absorption process later on in some other videos 